Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at how to build our left hand and also to have some kind of a left hand awareness, where to play and what to play in that particular register. The registers are basically, you know, somewhere around middle C, somewhere below middle C and then really low. So you need to figure out what to do in each register. So what I've done is I've created a melody, a simple tune, which goes something like over some simple chords. I'm going to teach you that first. And then what we are going to do is we are going to study the role of each register of the left hand, if that makes sense to you. What, what, what I mean by register is the pitch range, whether it's the first E or the next E or this C or this C. Right. So that's pretty much what we are trying to do in this lesson. So first, let's learn the melody. Then we learn the chords for the melody. Then I'm going to tell you what to play in each in the left hand in each register and then a few patterns along the way. And I think this could serve pretty much every skill level. If you're a beginner, just learning how to play melodies here with harmony here, this could definitely help you. If you're someone who's advanced, who's uh, proficient with the sustain pedal, this could also help help you greatly so stay tuned till the very end of the lesson there will be something to learn at each level and even if you are not able to figure it out right now in this lesson you could probably write things down and uh, work on it over the weeks and the coming months let's get cracking and before we do it will be great if you can hit that subscribe button hit the bell icon for uh, regular notifications which we will give you, not we, YouTube will give you whenever we release a new video and uh, the notes on Patreon will help supplement the learning. There will be notes for each of these lessons, the future lessons and whatever we've done in the past as well. Okay guys, let's get cracking. So first let's learn the melody. Melody, so I've chosen this on the key of E minor. E natural minor which is basically E F sharp G A B C D E E D C B A G F sharp E E natural minor is developed from the G major key or the one sharp key coming to the tune the tune is you can follow along with me it'll also be notated for your reference so first thing is let's just try if we can play it with either a, a uh, an E minor chord and that's one thing I'd like to talk about with respect to the left hand the left hand when you play around middle C it's okay to play triad so in this case E minor played as E G B how we learn it normally but you don't want to play it too low you don't want to play it so low as you even though it's a beautiful chord, E minor, it just sounds really annoying low because the frequencies of each of the notes are too close to each other to make a lot of sense. Sort of like color. Uh, very tough to tell the difference between two really, really dark colors like, or, uh, like red and green, really dark. You may not even tell the difference, isn't it? Unless you're a skilled uh, uh, person. So if you go lower, then what you'd want to do is play just simple octaves or fifths. So the same melody first here, then the same melody here. You need to just play it with fifths. And if you want to go super low, you can only survive with octaves. And octaves sound huge. So whenever you're playing octaves, try to consider playing it in the lower region of the piano keyboard, around here and not. Now it kind of intrudes the melody and it doesn't sound as heavy or as epic as it should have, you know. So let's just develop that. So line one. In this region around middle C, then lower. You can now do a fifth chord, E, B and E, or you could go super low and play like a thick octave. Okay, now 
I must also say this: if you don't have a piano which has so many keys, when you're if you're just starting off and you have a smaller keyboard, uh, I think sixty one key would be like the bare minimum. Uh, don't get anything smaller than that. It'll be very difficult for you to navigate with your hands, unless of course you're buying something for travel purposes or something where you you know assemble blocks of keys together and play them. So sixty one key becomes a bare minimum. So you could use a transpose button and go minus twelve to take the whole keyboard down an octave, primarily because it's rare that you're going to play really high elements. You're not going to play so. Unless you really want to, of course, in which case you would need an 88 key piano. So I would suggest, uh, if you have a 61 key, just turn the octave down by about an octave, either minus 12 or an octave minus one. Uh, if you have an 88 key, then it's quite easy to visualize. You have this is where you play your block chords or the entire chord, E G B, and. This is where you play the fifth chord, and this is where you play the big octave. Okay, now the melody that was the first half. I'm just going to add another variation to the second part of the melody. First part again. Now. So. First line, second line. Just a variation. Then maybe you want to see my fingers once. I'm crossing my hand here. Coming to the chords, it's boring to just play an E minor, right? So the chords are there, which are that's a D major second chord, which you would consider as the seven flat major. That's a D major. Now you go C major. Now, if you know C major seventh, you could add a B there. and then you could go b minor at the very end or b minor 7th which is b d f sharp a now all these chords work when you play them as blocks because they are in and around middle c so let's go by that once more d major c b minor again D major, C major, seventh. Play it with some emotion, which is essentially dynamics, and make some notes stand out. the rhythm going by try to actually imagine a drummer playing with you, you know and uh, feel some kind of a ghost percussion or a drummer musician just playing along with you and that really helps to build more left hand options so you go Another thing I like to do in my right hand because what's going to tend to happen is as you go lower and lower in the left hand to make it more and more deeper and more epic. The more deeper it goes, the more epic, the more braver, the more vibrant it it can tend to sound, you know, uh, and more impactful for the overall listening experience. So you want to go low, but then when you go low, you can't play the nice sounding e minor which you used to play there so you should also figure out a way to squeeze in that chord in your right hand as you go lower so i'm going to do the same melody first it was 
now with chords you see i'm not even using my left hand right now which is quite cool isn't it so you go what's happening here i'm just adding other notes of the chord that's e minor i could even hold my pedal down which is happening right now now i need to cross right now you do the other inversion of e minor which has the b up top you could do like a da da sus four going to major which is all possible in the right hand with that lower voice again and now next so this kind of works really well when you pick out the chords of your song and then play the melody with the chords but then you need to invert the chord so that the melody line stands out at the top now you may be arguing what happens if the melody is not contained in the chord you know or the chord notes are not contained in the melody well that's a bit rare if you ask me most of the conventional melodies which happen will be either the root the third or the fifth stressed or accented so why do we need that because when we go lower this is the voicing which i tend to employ so we finish this voicing now you could play this in another way in an arpeggiated way there's a lot of movement uh, i'm not going to talk so much about arpeggios in this lesson because there are a ton of videos on youtube literally a ton of videos where we deal with a lot of these arpeggios especially the left handed arpeggios which will serve this lesson very well so do check out some of our other tutorials on specifically arpeggios and let me know in the comments if you have any doubts regarding that so anyway so you could play it as blocks or you could play it as arpeggios there we go but now i want to take it low i want to take it deep to this low e and see what i can strategize from there so the first opportunity you have is the fifth chord so you can play e b e which takes off the third namely the g so ta na 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 play a nice rhythm pam pa pam tum ta tum pum and then ta na 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 did it indeed did it indeed do 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 so you could go this is your rhythm na 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 or any rhythm really just using the root the fifth and the octave uh, i will write down a few rhythms so do check that out in the notes so you go pam pam b minor sounds quite big right just by going lower in the keyboard what you could do in the right hand you could try and slam these chords with the harmony which i told you earlier so then so that's your left hand and slightly thicken right hand because the right hand is trying to now do what the left hand used to do and it can't do that by playing the third since it's lower now you may also argue why can't i play the third why do i have to take away the third and play a fifth chord well you could voice the chord slightly differently you could do what we call as a spread voicing technique in the left hand which goes 1 5 10 the 10 is also the upper third 
uh, there's a huge huge uh, playlist detailed videos on this on our youtube channel just search for spread voicing you'll find a lot of these things i've even done songs using these wider arpeggio techniques so with that well you could go with fifths or Five, ten. So, there we go. So now you're playing all the notes of the chord in a spread voicing. So, na 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 na. This one. Na 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 do. Na na na. Of course, trying to do it with two hands, so you need an arpeggiated. You need to kind of arpeggiate it because it's very tough to hold it together with one hand. You'll have to arpeggiate the hand. Right, and the last part of the video or the last part of this discussion would be how do you make it even more epic? Remember what I said earlier: the lower you go, the more incredible it's going to sound, or the huger it's going to sound. So if you just actually throw away the chords and just play the roots of the chords and go to the lowest possible E, check that. Just hold that; it's more than enough. And again, could sort of slam it more aggressively if you like. This is not too difficult to play. Actually, we've actually come to like a very, very basic version, but super epic. It's like the most epic if you compare it with. Even though this is a bit trickier to play with all the chords, here it's just single roots and octaves. It's slamming. Check that out. You're just using the property of this amazing instrument, the piano, to just give you that sound. It's not really a human thing. It's more awareness of where to play, especially the left hand. Okay. Now you can couple this octave technique by going something like so. What I did there, I played the root of the chord. And then what did I do? I climbed all the way up and continued to play the triad, which I played at the very beginning, just a little delayed. So this is the normal one with the epic bass. There we go. So we have the best of both worlds. We have the really epic. Bass here, and we have the entire chord, and then I'm going to literally the I guess the last note of the piano, which is this B or one of the last notes, and then. It's also it needs to be said that the sustain pedal is providing an active part of this shifting process. Without the pedal, see, you can't really do. You can't go. Your hand will jump. Very tough without the pedal. So make use of that tool. Uh, most pianos come with the pedal, even digital pianos. If not. Try to figure out a pedal which will help you play in this style. So let's just recap everything, guys. Uh, again, try to move the video back and forth to just see if you've missed out anything. I hope that you achieve all of the all of the points which I tried to convey in this lesson. The first and foremost, the melody. Let's revise everything now. The tune. With the chords, you can just do blocks in and around middle C. Where do blocks work again? Middle C. Okay. Then we did the fifth option.
and how to fifth sound even more epic or even more cooler by adding the tenth instead of the octave. There we go. And the last mission was to play the super low E or the roots very low. And then combine that if you can with the pedal with a higher triad. But the triad has to be played in and around middle C. Let's do that once more. That's pretty much it. So I, I hope I have conveyed the general role of each register of your left hand or bass region or bass clef of the piano. Very important to be aware of what you can do and what you sh thus should do. Because what you can do is governed by the laws of physics and just created by mother nature. So you can't really change that, can you? You can only use it and see the beauty with each area of the piano that is a very important part of this lesson which i wanted to convey and i hope you can make sense of this in your own music or any cover or any song which you're trying to learn because this was just a small example or a small glimpse with a really simple melody and it's always good to start with a small motif like this and then see where it goes from there. And I hope you enjoy your left hand even more after this lesson. As always, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. Do consider subscribing if you haven't already to the channel. Hit that bell icon for regular notifications. We are on Patreon where you'll have all my notes. And if you'd like to consider learning music in depth at our school in person with us via, you know, virtual uh, conferencing, you could go to our website, nathanielschool.com, fill up a couple of forms and we will hear from you. Cheers. Catch you in the next one.